All right, everyone. Oh my gosh, I am super excited to introduce you to one of my new friends. Um, Tim Story recommended that Jim and I speak. And so we made the connection and I wanted to share Jim with all of my viewers as well. So hi, Jim. Thank you so much for being on today. Good to see you, Amanda. Good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So what I love about what Jim has going on is number one, he's got this thing called 18 summers. Okay. And what's really cool about this is obviously I'm all about speaking into realtors lives and helping them go from just doing, you know, selling that house and making an income or flipping that house and, and making a check, but really creating the multiple streams so that you can have more quality time with your children, with your loved ones. And when I heard about this 18 summers thing with Jim, I was like, oh my gosh, like that is so perfect. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I like you, Amanda, I made my bones in real estate. I've been a full-time real estate investor for 22 years. And so an offspring of this was this family education company my wife and I started called 18 Summers because we saw a lot of professionals, especially real estate, because that's where I was most at home working with, with other real estate professionals. They were doing really well in business, but failing at home. And a mentor of mine taught me a real valuable lesson years ago saying the years are not all created equal. You have 18 summers with your children. Now, of course, they're still your children afterwards, but the average person will spend 85% of the time they ever have with their kids by the end of their 18th summer. And when that math equation hit me, it really made me make some shifts in my life where the whole goal of 18 summers is I want to see you be successful in business, but I also want to see you be successful at home. There doesn't have to be success in one and failure in the other. I think you can have the best of both worlds. So my wife and I, with her Montessori and Waldorf background, have put together some simple strategies and rhythms that have helped now thousands of entrepreneurs, especially real estate professionals across the world, make sure that as they build their business, their family comes along with them and they actually stay intact. They stay together. They stay deeper and closer. Yeah, I love that because, you know, it, it, the truth is we all get into real estate thinking that it's, you know, freedom, you know, it's, I'm going to be able to create my own schedule and my own life and yep. work with clients when I want to work with clients. And that's yep. just not the case, is it? <laughs> no, we forget that. We forget that, that that's why we went into the, as you said, freedom of time, freedom of choice, being able to do things probably our parents could never do for us. And our intentions are always good, especially real estate professionals, agents, we want to work hard. We want to get it over the line. We want to, you know, get to the next and, and create something. But again, there are some ways, Amanda, that I've learned that we can, as, as we're building that, we can keep some things intact so that the family life doesn't fall apart. And unfortunately, I've seen a large percentage of real estate professionals, very successful, have bad family lives. And usually it's because the lack of quality time and just setting, again, a couple of simple rhythms and strategies to help keep them grounded at home. So speaking of that, would you mind sharing just like a tip or two with the audience here just to kind of give them an idea or maybe like a step in the right direction? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost is just because we provide and and we, you know, work really hard and build businesses and bring in financial resource, we are not immune from apologies. So we, we sometimes pedestal our stuff and think it's so important and it is business is important. But we pedestal our stuff like we don't owe our spouse or our children apologies if we're not there sometimes, if we're short sometimes. A sincere apology will go a long way. So if you've been short, if you've been absent, a sincere apology is a great starting point. And it doesn't mean that, hey, well, I'm not going to apologize. You know how hard I've worked? Okay, I understand. I'm that person who doesn't like to apologize either. But sometimes that can be the starting point. Um, and the second thing, Amanda, is make sure that you're you're spending actual quality time with each of your family members and i we we are big fans of the one-to-one -one principle uh meaning that my wife and i spend quality time just the two of us each of my children and i spend time just the two of us one-to-one -one is a very powerful way to to separate the parts to strengthen the whole uh, and i'd say the third thing to to look at so we have sincere apology we have the one-to-one -one principle we need to look at at tech fasting amanda now, I know for some real estate professionals out there, I just scared the hell out of them, but you have to disconnect to reconnect. And I know it's that badge of honor. I'm available at one in the morning. If you have a problem, I'll take that listing. I get it. 
but I found that if you will just turn off your phone for, for very pinnacle parts of the day, like the end of the day around dinner time, have it off completely and be there fully for your family, that's a starting point. That's a starting point for reconnecting. And you know what you'll find? Your phone's off for an hour, hour and a half. If you're setting your business up right, you're not missing anything. The world is not exploded. But what I found is if it's, you're always willing to take that call in front of your family and over your family time, well, that shows which is less priority and which is more priority. So tech fasting has been a big part of my life. I mean, I got it from the, the saying intermittent tech fasting or intermittent fasting. Uh, you know, you've heard of that for the health benefits, right? You're not giving up eating, but you're being very disciplined in the times you are going to eat and not going to eat. So getting control of that device, that laptop, that phone has been one of the best ways I've seen people to calm the storms, feel more connected, feel like they're not missing out on home life because they're working so hard. Yeah. And, oh man, I agree with you 100%. When I used to live in California, there was a, there was this thing I went to up in like the mountains of California. It was like Ukiah or something like that. It was called the digital detox. Oh, nice. And it was four or five days. And when you got there, you literally had to give them your cell phone, your watch, your computer, like anything that you had that was digital. Like there was no clocks. You didn't ever know what time it was. You woke up when the sun came up and you went to bed when the sun went down and it was a retreat. And it was the most amazing life-changing thing I had ever done because it actually gave me time and space to really like be creative and think and just work on my business and work on myself more so. So that's been years ago. I'm talking probably like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And then just recently, um, we ended up going, we, we're living in Cabo San Lucas right now. Yep. And about two hours from here, there is a place called Chilo Chill and it's glamping on the beach. Oh, nice. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so um, I said, you know what? We're, we were going with a group of friends. But I said, you know what? I need to do this for myself. And I literally turned my phone off. Everyone else had their phones on, but I had my phone off for the entire two days. It was two nights. It was actually like three days. And the first day I was a little freaking out, right? I, sure. I, I you, you know. You think something's going to explode while you're gone, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I had my assistant, you know, she was taking care of everything. I had some other people that were on call for me. But it was weird because the first day I'm like, I started having panic attacks as I was like, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Oh my God, I've lost my phone. I'm like, oh no, I don't have my phone with me. <laughs> and I literally right? just like yeah. left. Because you feel, yeah, you feel naked. You're like, I'm so used to having this, you know, on me. So It's an addiction. It's it really, is, it really addiction. is. And it's, it, but again, it's, it, I'm in, I'm in Nosara, Costa Rica. You're in Cabo, San Lucas right now. I love technology, but we need a break from it. And that's what I've learned that, you like everything you named the creativity feeling more calm and also a realization that you've never forgotten i mean you said oh that was years ago i've never forgotten because once you've turned it off once for a few days and i've done that too like you know complete tech fast for a couple of days you start to realize you don't realize when you're in the moment but once you cut it you say i don't i didn't realize every traffic stop going into the bathroom like every minute you're checking 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 and you don't realize it until you actually pull it out of your diet completely for a few days and go, okay, I don't need to do it that much. And I, I do think it's, you have to keep, keep doing it. But like you said, you've probably never gone back to the level you were at before you went on that tech retreat. Yeah. It makes you realize, you know, what you're doing and it, it's, it, there's nothing more sad than going out to dinner and seeing a family sitting at the table and everyone's on their phones and no uh, one's talking to each other. Well, and that brings up one of the other things that I always recommend. My wife and I do lots of family retreats, lots of, of, of date couple uh, set of, of workshops. And if people are having trouble, the first question I asked Amanda, I said, when's the last time you went on a date with your spouse? Because my wife and I have a every Thursday, 530 to 830. What we are going on a date every week. We have it set in stone. I'm not doing a podcast. I'm not meeting with investors. That's our time. And my phone's off. And that one thing has been so key. And I'll ask other very successful people. I'll say, when's the last time you went on a date with your spouse? Oh man, seven, eight months ago. Hey, the last time you went on, did your phone go off? Oh yeah, I had to take a few texts and yeah, we were closing, we had this closing happening and the lender conditions came back. I get it, but it's a really bad time 
to have your phone on you. So just a simple date night once a week too can can save so many marriages. I'm convinced of it. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk about that a little bit. So in order for my audience is mostly real estate agents and real estate investors. So in order for um, let's just say a real estate agent to feel secure in saying, hey, I'm going to turn my phone off for certain periods of time. Do you believe that they need to have multiple streams of income coming in and it's not they're not they're not living for just that one call to sell that one house? Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I could not be doing what I'm doing now. where We love these family adventures to go someplace we love for a few weeks and live, work and play from there. And I couldn't do that without multiple streams of income, without a good team. So, so the answer is yes, absolutely. You have to leverage off that real estate commission momentum to put it to work in different directions. Yep. So what do you, what do you do? I mean, I know that you're a builder down in Florida. You are doing some really cool um, build to rent programs, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, but what are some what are some income streams that you just you love and that you feel secure in right now? Yeah, that's a great question, Amanda. So I, I didn't leave far from home with my with my um, my income streams because again, I was always a rehabber. I'd rehab, I'd fix a house up, resell it, fix a house up, resell it, and then started to hold rentals. So my main niche is now is I have a normal long-term rental property. I have short-term vacation rentals, um, and I'm also a partner in an RV resort. Um, my, my, um, my main income source now, although I am a, a, a licensed agent, is I have a build-to-rent program where we're building in nine different markets in, in Florida and one in Georgia, and that's my biggest revenue source, but everything I do with that goes into um, my, my long-term, my short-term I might do another RV resort. And I also have 18 Summers, a family education business that also brings in uh, different streams of income from workshops, retreats, talks I do, programs that we offer. So those are kind of my different ones. A lot of real estate and then the family education, which is more my heart, my passion. Well, we have a lot in common because I yeah. have the traveling realtors, which is the retreats and the CE courses and all that stuff. And oh, then cool. we've got our short-term rentals as well. And oh, then we good. have our long-term rentals. And then I have my Airbnb course. So, oh, nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the build to rent. Because when you first told me about this pro these projects, I was like, oh my God, that's freaking genius. Because I don't know about your market, but our market back in Raleigh, North Carolina is insane. I mean, there's literally 2,300 homes in our MLS right now. And that's normally seven, eight, 9,000 homes. Yeah, so there's still, yeah. I know it's crazy right now. And you know, Jacksonville is about the same way. And that was our main hub market. And this really happened by mistake about seven years ago, Amanda. You know, we were coming out, did, did a lot of bulk foreclosures, which was great after the 08 meltdown. Uh, but but the old book, you know, Spencer Johnson, Who Moved My Cheese? The cheese had moved. You know, there was a lot less foreclosures available. What was available was uh, was being priced higher. There were lots of investors jumping in. I buy properties for myself and then get hired by investors to do all the work for them, you know, turnkey like. And but we couldn't make the numbers work anymore. You know, you'd have to start cutting corners and really lowering the returns. It didn't make sense. And my now building partner and I, who had done deals together, and him and his father owned a management company that managed my personal portfolio, he said, why don't we start building some properties? Um, we build our own. And I thought, wow, building. I've always been a rehabber. That was almost like a dirty word. And um, we said, well, let's start. And that was seven years ago. And we built about $3 million worth of rental property in an area of Jacksonville that we knew. And we did the hedgehog concept. We stuck with it. You know, single family, duplexes and quads, some townhouses. So all Fannie Freddie friendly stuff in areas poised for growth. We, I, I was taught years ago, Amanda, to go into five, a market with five um, principles, economic growth, population growth, affordability, desirability, something drawing them there, and a healthy supply and demand ratio. And so Florida, like Jacksonville was perfect. That has all five of those factors, which is hard to find. And we went from there to Ocala, to Palm Coast, to five markets in Southwest Florida, to Southwest Atlanta. And so that's what we always look for. We build new construction rentals in high growth areas. I like to go into areas where I can show up at Friday, 
eight o'clock at night if I wanted to, and I don't feel nervous. Um, so we, what we say is we're in B neighborhoods with A properties because they're brand new, 210 warranties, our old properties, we can only get you know a one year warranty. So it's really taken off, Amanda. Again, I'm proud to say the first year, um, we did about 3 million um, of property. Uh, in 2020, we put just under, just over 120 million under contract uh, with our investor group. So with our investor group. So yeah, it's really taken off. One thing that was important, we wanted to have management in place in all of our markets. Um, and again, we just do the same thing over and over. And what we found is we were able to get, the, the margins are more thin for us than I ever did rehabbing houses, but the volume's bigger. And so I'm happy to make less on each transaction and make up for it in volume. Uh, and now it's taken off at this point. So are these, are you selling these as more of like a turnkey property, meaning, you know, yes. you're having the renter, are you, are you finding the renters for these properties? Yeah, so it's a turn, it is, I used to do a lot of turnkeys. I bought a lot for myself and did a lot of turnkeys. Um, so these are turnkey properties. So you're buying a new construction home. It takes about six to 12 months to build it. Um, but as you, you step in, we have management in place. You step in and we take it from start to finish for you uh, and have a good reputation, lots of good references, which is one of the ways we got put in touch with you. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it is a full service turnkey program. Uh, I kind of burned my ships again about five years ago when I started to look and see, and again, I own, I own older properties, you know, so I own the old turnkeys, but I noticed with our new construction, Amanda, the three-year curse wasn't hitting. And the three-year curse, what I talk about is, I don't care if you do new roof, new heating and cooling, new plumbing, upgrade, electric, bath, kitchens, an older 40s and 50s house, normally after year three, will have a jump in maintenance and repairs. It just happens. And what I found with our new construction, that wasn't happening. And that gave me a longer longevity and an outlook for myself and for our investors. So I am proud to say I haven't rehabbed a property, you know, on any large scale for about five years now, which was big for me because I was such a rehabber. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we just bought our very first um, pre-construction home. So this is actually okay. one that we bought in Belize because we, you know, we're focusing Beautiful. on short term right now. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited though. And and living here in Cabo, there's so much opportunity for pre-sales. Yeah. And ones. And it's like, you know, you're walking into equity. Why not do that? Because, you know, we owned 15 long terminal properties too, and they were all old. And I know, you know, I know what you're talking about because we are uh, we're doing arbitrage right now, which is where we rent some of these properties and then we go in and we, you know, furnish them and everything, and then we rent them as short-term rentals. And so we have one property right now and I feel so bad for the owner. He has dumped $30,000 into this house in the last three months because the septic went out, the roof is terrible. And now he just found that the, um, the shower, like all of the plumbing is just, I mean, it's a 1950s house. And the, our guests that are staying there have been showering and they're like, oh my God, there's like six inches of water under the house because the pipe was busted and all of that water coming out of the shower is just flooding oh. the bottom of the house. <laughs> and I'm like, I am so happy I don't own this property right now. I don't, I don't miss them, Amanda. I got to tell, I mean, I still own a, 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 a handful of older ones, but I'm just, it was a trade up. It's something that you learn. And again, they got you and I where we were going, but we've just seen such a happier trajectory, smoother, less headaches, happier tenants, better growth projections. And like you said, since we're going into high growth markets, we never promise value or rent increases from what we market at today, but it's happened many, 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 many times. Um, again, Florida, as you know, through the pandemic has become the exodus state. You know, we can't even keep up with the population demand. We have that wind at our back where it's a good time to be providing rental property for this huge influx that was not expected. I mean, we were expecting a large influx over the next 10 years, but not to this degree. So that that puts us in a really good place of demand. And, and again, when people can see an old, not so great property or one of our brand new constructions, they're renting extremely quickly. Yeah, I can imagine. So what are the numbers on, on one of these look like? 
Like, are you still doing the one percent, which is like you kind of can't do? We can hit one. We cannot hit one percent when we do new construction, Amanda. We've tried, and what we we could if we would go into dangerous neighborhoods, just not willing to do it. It's just not my model. I've invested in in different ones. Tougher neighborhoods are tougher to manage, more turnover. So I didn't want to bring people there, especially if they're coming to us from out in California. Again, I'd like that rule of Friday night, eight o'clock. I can walk down the road if I need to. Um, not that you have to, but if you needed to. And so we're we're right now at a six to eight cap, um, and so that's like we go off cap rates normally. So we're averaging about six to eight uh, cap, and that's with um, with a couple of things. First of all, our management fees are cheaper because they're normally ten to twelve percent. We get it done for eight, and something that has been really uh, eye opening is when we used to do the 1% rule for our, our turnkey foreclosure properties that we would get, we would totally renovate, we would, we would aim to hit the 1%. We found that with maintenance from repairs starting to creep up on some of those houses, we're not seeing that now. So even though we're below the 1% for where we hit, we're almost averaging at the same thing because our maintenance and repairs is so low and the longevity of the, the client, the tenant, seems to stay longer in these new construction homes. So it'll obviously be a little bit less on a single family compared to a duplex or quad. So the return on investment will go up. Um, but again, that's what we aim to hit about a six to eight cap uh, for it. And that'll vary from market. And our price points are about 165 to about 550. So that could be 165 for a townhouse or a single family home, all the way up to 550 for a duplex in a, in a you know really good area of Jacksonville or Southwest Florida or something like that. Right. And you can pretty much eliminate that capital expense. I mean, yeah, it's going to need some stuff in, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. But um, let's just as an example, uh, let's just say they get a home for the 165 range. Mm -hmm. What would that normally rent for? That's going to rent for, depending on where we're at, probably close to 1400, 14, yeah, about 1400, depending on the area of what it is, but uh, 1395. Uh, so again, you're a little below the 2%. I mean, the, the 1% rule, but uh, again, with longevity, less maintenance and repairs and lower management fees, we're about hitting where we used to uh, on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely know some investors that would be all over this. So if you're watching us right now and you're you're looking to maybe uh, get out of California, I know a lot of you are, uh, that's where the majority of my market is, it's, it's investors living in California. And you know, they can sell one property in California and come and buy five properties in Florida, North Carolina, or wherever it is. I did that. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot years, of people do many this. years ago. Yeah, yeah, many years ago, and that was with older ones. Yeah, a large of our, as we talked, a large contingency of our client base comes out of California. I had the similar story where I was a California investor, came here. I don't miss paying 13 point something percent on on my state income tax money anymore. Um, our friendlier landlord laws. There's lots of good things that are going on for Florida that help again with that exodus. Um, and uh, as we talked about, we'll look forward to maybe uh, maybe teaming up on some stuff, Amanda. Yeah, absolutely. And it would just be, in my opinion, so easy, right? If one if an investor can sell their property right now in California and then just 1031 that directly in with you guys and go ahead and get you know however many properties they can with you guys, yeah. that would be a very easy transaction. Yeah, it's good. And and I know we something we haven't even talked about, but I'm sure you're taking advantage of with some of your newer deals. When I bought my first property, which was 22 years ago in Lompoc, California, it was a three family house fixer upper. I got a rate with good credit um, and the job W2 is the full stock 9.125 because it was a three family house. 9.125. Now, some of our investors are paying a little buy down and getting locked in at the twos, you know, and without that, even just in the threes. So I, I'm not sure, I'm, I know you understand, but I hope people out there realize, especially realtors, these types of rates cannot last forever. And to lock in in the threes and hold a property long-term is a very powerful position to put yourself in. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, so if anyone's watching right now and you're interested in some of these projects, you know, reach out to me, reach out to Jim. We'd be happy to give you some information on this. Um, I'm going to have the whole the whole shebang after this because um, I'm actually very interested in these projects as well. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of short term right now, but 
we keep saying, hey, we're going to hold out till the market goes back down because we were going to, we were actually planning on jumping back into our long-term rental properties, but I had never really thought about until recently about buying new construction. And it just makes sense, especially with the interest rates right now. Yeah, it really does. Not only the interest rates and that's something important too, with our program, the way we designed it is you don't have to get a construction loan. So, you know, construction loans can be paperwork intense, you know, more involvement. We take that risk phase. You just have to come in with the permanent loan at the end. So that is a nice thing, you know, for, for, for people as well. And, and again, the long-term has shut down in a lot of areas, you know, it's just gone too high, but luckily Florida, we're still able to find these growth um, spots. And again, we started this process about two years ago. We always have a large amount of land that we're, we're already in active in buying, developing and set up. So we'll buy something two years before you'll even hear about it. Uh, but so since we have that, that pipeline going, we've been able to get into the land that allows us to continue building in these high growth markets and get you the yield that a lot of other places can't. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Follow, following the Walmart, right? Or there the it sheep. is. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's a very it's simple. Model. Gas stations. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the old Walmart. And I'm not a huge Walmart fan for going in, but, uh, but the old thing, the, the, the new construction, it is, it is. And people go, how do you make money? I said, well, we make less money than I used to on, on rehabbing houses and selling them, but we do a volume and people are happier. And it has a cleaner trajectory. And I really like that. I like simplicity. I like to be able to talk to you from Costa Rica and you from Cabo and not be dealing with, oh my gosh, what's behind this wall again? You know, which I had to deal with for many, many years with my rehab projects. (laughs) Oh, they never go as planned. We're in two flips right now. And it's just, yes, nothing ever goes as planned. (laughs) And that's just the rule I started to live by. It's not going to go as you think. Just be ready. So, but, but they're still great. I, if anyone out there is doing them, I encourage them. Just for me, this was kind of a graduating effect where my life has gotten much better in the business end, going from build to rent than doing a high volume of rehab properties. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, gosh, this has been like amazing. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and play this before our Wealthy Realtor Masterclass. I know we had spoke about um, you speaking at the Wealthy Realtor Masterclass, but we want to do it a little bit earlier. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch this. And uh, and then for all of you that are watching, I'm interviewing nine other rock stars, just like Jim on next Thursday, the 25th is the Wealthy Realtor Masterclass. And I'm actually interviewing Tim Story, who, who introduced us as well. Yep. Big fan, big fan yes. of Tim. He's done great things, so. Yeah, and, and for those of you that don't know Tim, celebrity life coach, uh, written many, many books, and we are just going to have a great chat. So um, all of you watching, you know, we're, you know me, I'm all about creating multiple streams of income, focusing on passive income. And so, you know, this is just another stream. If you're in a situation right now where you're like, I can't buy anything right now. Well, guess what? You can refer your investors over to Jim and myself. And we'll be able to pay you referral fees, okay? Don't Absolutely. think, yeah, like, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, get realtors to think outside the box a little bit because a lot of realtors, they're just so focused on that one transaction and that one client that they can personally work with. They never think about all of the other money you can make with referring your, your deals out. You can refer your investors, you can refer so much stuff. And that's a great stream of income, another stream, right? There it is. Yeah. Let most of the work fall on our shoulders and just open a pipeline of referral fees. We have a few agents doing very well doing that right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like this Belize property that we just bought, you know, I, I bought it because I like it and I've always wanted an overwater bungalow with a glass bottom floor. So I bought one. And so I posted it on my, on my Facebook page and I had eight other investors want one as well. And so hey, why not take advantage of that opportunity? So I called the developer and I'm like, hey, what kind of referral fees can we do here? Because I'm about to start selling your overwater bungalows in Belize (laughs) from North Carolina. (laughs) Yeah, that's fantastic. And that that is, you have to get out of your own backyard. Always, I've learned that if you look outside your backyard, just the the opportunity grows so much greater. Um, And I think you and I are proof of that. Yes, 100%. 
So. so Jim, how can they get in touch with you? How can they learn more about 18 Summers and your projects and just everything that we have going on? Yeah. So if you want to learn more about 18 Summers, making sure family life stays intact as you're growing your real estate business, you can go to 18summers.com or as I know Amanda follows us on Instagram, um, 18 Summers Tribe. You get to learn a little bit about us, some of the things we do with our family to try to keep things together and happy and and whole. Never perfect. Family life's not perfect. Don't let anyone tell you differently, uh, but that'll give you some ideas on that. And real estate, you'll be able to contact Amanda, or if you want to learn a little bit more about Build to Rent, just go to jackswealthinvestments.com. Um, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about our program, my history in real estate, our team, and, and what we're doing with the Build to Rent model. That's amazing. Well, I appreciate your time today, Jim. Thank you so much for those golden nuggets um, about, you know, getting that, that quality time with your loved ones. I think we all need to hear that multiple times. Sure. So just oh, really appreciate your time today. No, thank you, Amanda. Glad thank to be you. here. Take care.